Hey guys, so today we're doing a video all about under eyes, how to make sure they don't crease, make it last all day. Um, this is actually a really true testament because I'm actually six hours into my makeup. So yeah, I hope you guys like this. I'm actually wearing my lip color in collab with Nude Sticks right now. I will leave a link and a discount code down below if you guys want to purchase it. And yeah, let's get into the video. Alright guys, so I'm actually currently mid-face right now, so please excuse the dimensionless face. Um, I've just put on my foundation and a little bit of cream bronzing and my edges are like freshly snatched. Anyways, let's get into the video. Um, so today I wanted to kind of go over under eyes and just how to address them properly and what I find works for me. Now, I'm gonna go over a couple of things, so this might be a chatty video, and if you don't like long videos, this probably is not the video for you. So, if that's the case, I don't know what to tell you. Moving on. Um, so first things first, I feel like what's underneath and just your foundation is key, not your actual foundation, but what you're putting your makeup on top of is key. Um, a good eye cream I love. I know some people don't like eye creams. I feel like people don't want to use an eye cream until they're in their 40s, but I think everyone can benefit from a good eye cream. Now, I do feel like a lot of the ones on the market are just very gimmicky and don't really work, or they're just like a more concentrated version of the facial like moisturizer that's kind of link sold with it. Um, the one that I have found and have seen the biggest difference with is this is SkinCeuticals AGE Eye Complex. Um, this one is one of my favorites. I am going to repurchase it. I have just seen the most results with it. It also helps with darkness. It says, mature skin remedy to diminish dark circles, puffiness, and affects glycation. Um, so I have definitely seen a like really big result with this. I have noticed just smoother under eyes, a big decrease in darkness. I can use this during the day, but I mostly use it during the night. I only use it during the day if my eyes are just like dry and just look tired. I definitely use this, but I wait probably a good 30 minutes before putting makeup over top so it really sinks into the skin. So that's a really good thing too. Now another really important step is one of the most obvious. It's drink a lot of water and stay hydrated. The first place I personally see dehydration in my skin is my lip lips getting very dry and my eyes getting very dry and looking dark. Also, sleep has a lot to do with it. I have really bad allergies, so as you guys can see, the contrast between my foundation and how purple my under eyes are is pretty intense. Um, so I think it's just like a lot of it's genetics, a lot of it's like allergy related. It's a lot of different things, but uh, finding a good concealer is really a good way to remedy that and it's a quick fix, it works, and it's just about finding what works for you. So let's get into concealers. So some of my favorite concealers include Tarte Shape Tape, which is the obvious one. Everyone loves this one. I know some people do experience dryness with it. I get a lot of peeling under my eyes because I do use a medical grade retinol, and even though I don't put it directly under my eyes, it kind of travels there, so I get a lot of dryness. And sometimes it can look a little bit dry. Um, so to remedy that, I kind of go a little bit more lightweight with it. Now, I do like a lot of concealer under my eyes. There's no like denying that. So again, it's personal preference. You can do three dots. You can put the whole bottle under your eyes. It's really personal preference. I do like a very full on look because for me, it's all or nothing. Um, and a second favorite of mine is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I have used this for years and I have loved it since I first like used it. I love it for eyeshadow primer. I love both of these for eyeshadow primer. If you want more of a hydrated under eye, I know the Benefit Stick one is really good too with the hydrating serum, but most hydrating under eye concealers won't have as much coverage to them. It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye is a great full coverage hydrating under eye concealer. On me, it's just a little bit much and I think something in it doesn't really sit well with my skin because it always feels very warm under my eyes. And when a product feels warm on my skin, usually it's because I'm having an allergic reaction. Um, so if I wasn't allergic to it or whatever the issue is there, I would definitely use that one, but for today's video, I'm going to be using, let's use the MAC Pro Longwear. This is in the shade NW25. Now, my only gripe with this is the applicator sucks. I usually do two pumps. I would ideally love to do one and a half, but for those of you who have tried Pro Longwear, you know the struggle of trying to get out as much as you want. So I just put a little bit on the back of my hand. Now, I love this because it's a nice pinky undertone, but it's not too pink. And I can still use this when I'm lighter. I just did some self-tanning last night. Like a little bit of a self-tan, not anything too crazy. I could have gone a little bit more intense, but you know. No, you don't know, because I don't know either. Um, I like applying this a little bit everywhere. And I'm not really super high maintenance. And yes, I know it's a lot of concealer for some people. But again, this is what works for me. Um, and yeah, so Beauty Blender or Sponge, this is the Real Techniques face and body. It is huge, but I do have a very big man face, so I like to use a bigger sponge. It gets the job done faster. And since I started using this, 
it cuts my makeup down, like my makeup time down by a lot because it just blends everything out really fast. I use it for foundation as well, and I just go in. Now, I only use sponges for my base and under eyes and concealer from like for the past year, probably just because I found that brushes soak up more product than a sponge do, in my opinion. And I also don't like swiping over the skin or buffing into the skin because a lot of times it can bring up a lot of dead skin or it can micro exfoliate your skin. I have very sensitive skin but I also use a retinol so my skin's usually peeling and or like a little bit irritated, not too irritated. But yeah. Also if you want more coverage out of your concealer I definitely recommend letting it sit for a little while and then blending it out because only with some concealers, the ones that set like this and then the Tarte Shape Tape, they actually kind of set by themselves. So I like to leave these on for a little bit longer than the rest of my concealer and then go and blend it out because I feel like by the time I get to it, it's almost starting to create a film. So that way a lot of the coverage stays exactly where you put it. I hope that makes sense. So yeah. And I'm just going to blend this out. And I get right up to my under eye. And you always want to get your inner corner of your eye because a lot of us do get a lot of darkness in that inner corner and we don't really notice it but as soon as it's covered it makes the biggest difference like look at this eye compared to this eye i know it's intense now as far as setting goes i am on the fence between loving and hating baking i definitely think that it is very helpful and it is a very key step in maintaining a full coverage concealer look all day long. Um, now, I found a way that works for me personally and works when I'm working on other people as well, very well, because sometimes what I found for me is if I go straight in with powder on this wet skin with a sponge and pack it on, it almost constricts the skin and it just looks like my skin's like almost like crumbled up almost and it just looks really dry and heavy. Now, what I started to do, and what I have been doing for the past probably year and a half, as far as under eyes go, is I go in with the brush, and I really pack on a colored powder. It doesn't have to be colored, it can be translucent as well, but I like a colored powder just to get that brightness there, and then I go over with the baking. So that way that initial moisture from your concealer is completely gone, and you're not dealing with that constricting skin from really dry powder on really wet skin, and your skin just kind of bunches up, if that makes sense. So my powders of choice are the Maybelline Better Skin Powders. Now this is my everyday face palette. I have some MAC Studio Fix Powders, the Make It Forever Contours, Maybelline Better Skin Powders, and then these are all MAC Studio Fix, and then just a random eyeshadow because we all need a random eyeshadow sometimes. Um, now I'm taking the Maybelline Better Skin Powder on this Dose of Colors brush. Now I love the Maybelline Better Skin. I love it so much. I have grown such a such a huge love for it because it's lightweight. It gives you about a medium coverage, but it just looks really smoothing and nice and it's affordable and it just looks great on the skin. So what I do is I actually get a mirror and I really load on the powder onto this brush. I go under and I kind of press out where the concealer started to crease and I work from inner corner going out. And you really want to look up so you can get that skin as uniform as possible and just tight so you can get in there. And even that already looks really nice. It looks a little bit brightened, but nothing too crazy. And I make sure to go right in here and on the side of the nose. And you can really see that difference already from this side to this side. The shine's down, it's a lot smoother, and it's set. Now, for me personally, I, this does not last all day on me. So instead of going all over my face and baking super, super heavy, is I take a beauty blender and my Derma Blend loose powder. I'll leave it linked down below. And I go in, this doesn't have to be damp, but you can dampen it as well. This is not damp. And I kind of look up into a mirror, and I go right underneath. Just really lightly, and I'm not going to leave this on for 20 minutes and do all that. But I do feel like this makes a difference. And if your under eyes are super, super dry, what I would do is just go right where your creases are and let it sit while you're doing the rest of your face. Like, don't even put it this far down. Just put it right where your creases are and then go about your day. So as far as powders go, my favorite powders 
definitely, this is my second tub of the Dermablend Loose Setting Powder. This is an original, it has 28 grams of product. Very comparable to the RCMA. I do feel like RCMA, more bang for your buck. I just have not gotten around to purchasing Purchasing a new one as of late, I do need to purchase a new one, make a little trip down to Namie's and get one, but I just haven't, so I've been using this, and I do love it, it's a really good staple, it doesn't give me a white cast, it doesn't dr over dry my skin, it still can be drying because at the end of the day it is powder, um, but it even does work really well on mature skin, but again, I feel like the RCMA is the end all be all, but again, it's just personal preference. Laura Mercier darkens my under eyes whenever I apply it, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's just me, I have heard other people say it, but other people do swear by it. It as well um, so this is just what I do on an everyday basis I dust it off probably I do like bronzer here and there and I dust it off another one of my favorite under eye setting brushes is the morphe m554 I have three of these this was my holy grail before this one I like this one because it packs on a little bit better but this one if you don't want to pack on as much is great because it's just very soft I really like this to kind of dust off the powder and when I'm doing this I kind of just go very light-handed because again your under eyes you want to be very delicate and gentle and not be too rough with them. But again, you can kind of take the rest of the powder and go around your face. I do this a lot. So that way I'm not just dusting it off into nothing. I kind of move it around and set the rest of the face with the excess that I'm dusting off. So yeah, guys, this is what works for me personally. It stays all day. I have not had my under eyes crease on me like throughout the day in like over a year because once I started doing this, it stays. Baking works. It does work, I promise. It's just about finding a way to make it work for you and making sure you're hydrating your skin because if you're going to put some dry, heavy powder on your dry, heavy skin, it's not going to be cute. It's just not going to look good. It's going to look heavy. But even if you're a more mature skin or you have very wrinkly under eyes, I definitely recommend trying it this way so that way you're not overdoing it. And if anything, getting right underneath the eye and not putting it everywhere because, again, everything is not for everyone. So I'm going to go off camera and finish the rest of my face and I will be right back to finish off this video. Alright guys, so please excuse the look of my skin right now. I actually had to do some work stuff. Um, so I was actually gone for a while, like after I finished my face. Um, it's probably been five hours now. Yeah. So my under eyes still look really good. So this is actually probably a good thing because you can really see how the under eyes wear. They wear really nicely. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel crepey. It doesn't look heavy or crepey, at least in my eyes. I love this technique, I feel like it never fails me. I have not creased under my eyes, and I don't know how long I have used Bye Bye Under Eye, I have used Kevin Aquan, I have used so many of thick concealers, and still my under eyes stay intact when I do my under eyes this way. Um, so obviously you can kind of add and take away depending on how thick your concealer is. Obviously you might just want to set with the translucent powder and then set heavily with the translucent powder as opposed to using a colored powder then translucent. If you want more coverage I would definitely recommend the MAC Studio Fix powders or any full coverage foundation powder to set your under eyes if you want it to be very very bright, dramatic, and full coverage all day long. So overall like I hope this really helps you guys out because I know under eyes is a really big thing and I know I have a lot of mature viewers or even viewers that just can't really do baking like everyone else like myself like I can't do everything like everyone else because of my skin type and my skin concerns so I hope you guys like this video also also hold on hold on quick thing quick thing so I'm actually wearing my lip color in collab with nude sticks it's called Montaigne and I will have it linked down below um, this is how it looks with more tan skin because I know a lot of you guys wanted to see I will also have a video linked after all about like my collab with them where to get it when it's still launching as a solo because it's also sold in the kit right now. Um, so yeah, I'm going to link all that info down below. I hope you guys like this. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if you want more videos like this, and if so, on what. And until next time, I will see you then.